Hey guys, Will here. So today I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to introduce you to this insane dual PC build that I'm working on at the moment. You might've seen a few teasers floating around on social media, but basically what this is gonna be when it's completely finished is a sim racing PC up top and a streaming and camera recording and management system down the bottom. So up to this point, I've pretty much just been working on the kind of boring fabrication stuff. And I didn't really think that there was a video in getting it to this point because it's pretty repetitive and tedious stuff. But from here on in is where all the interesting stuff is gonna start. So what I wanted to do over the next little while is kind of take you along on this journey as we build this. And I'm spending as much time as is required to actually get things to look exactly the way I want. So I'm not rushing through it. There's no urgency to get this done. Basically what will happen is once this is completely built and it's ready for all the PC hardware to go in, we'll take the PC hardware that we're currently running, move it off the test benches that we've been running it on for the last little while and moving it into here. So let's start off by explaining exactly what we have here beside us and then I'll talk about the PC hardware that's actually gonna be going into this once it's all finished being built. So this is a Tool Pro workshop service trolley, basically the same thing as you would find in a mechanic workshop. And I thought it kind of suited the aesthetic of you know a sim racing PC, but we picked this up from a shop in Australia called Super Cheap Auto. Uh, they happen to have these on special, so we got it. I think it was about 40, 45% off. So we got lucky with that. We actually ended up buying a bunch of matching hardware too. So we bought a second one of these as well, which we can use to store things that we're working on, wheels and bits and pieces. And then we bought a massive tool chest too, which also matches this. So eventually the plan is to basically have like a big wall in the studio, which will have the PC, the tool chest, and whatever else we're working on, and everything will match aesthetically. So it should look really cool. So yeah, this is essentially just a workshop service trolley, which I've been hacking to pieces as tidily as I possibly can with my media mediocre uh, metal fabrication skills to get it to where we have it today. So bottom half here is gonna be the, uh, the streaming PC and then top half is gonna be the sim racing PC. And you can see we've got some EK pass-throughs. All the cooling gear on here is all EK. And this is stuff that they actually sent across to us for our wall-mounted PC build, which never ended up happening because we ended up moving studios to a place that we're renting. And I obviously didn't want to wall mount anything in a rented studio. So you can see down the bottom, we've got a EK reservoir. So this is a pump and reservoir system. So water goes in the top there or coolant, I should say. And then we've got the pump mechanism down here. That's going to pump coolant through the components. So we'll have a graphics card in here which will be uh, water-cooled, and then obviously the CPU as well. So that'll all pass through here. We've got a drain port down here as well, so you can see that will allow us to drain the coolant out of the system, and then just a little plug on the front here, which allows us to put a barb on and then uh, run the coolant out via a hose. Same deal on the second tier here as well, so we've got exactly the same system, same reservoir, and then we've got pass-throughs here for the hard lines, which we'll be using to come off the bottom PC basically run up all the way in front of here as well. So we're gonna run between where the motherboard sits and the reservoir. So we'll have a nice row of basically two pipes coming up and then two more which will run next to it. So we'll have four pipes sort of sitting in a bit of a staggered pattern coming up like so. So these two will run up. And if we have a look on the top panel here, we've got four more pass-throughs. So what I'm planning here is for these hard lines to come out, basically run around and then run over the top of the radiator panel here and then basically bend off into the various different ports on the radiator. So one of these radiators will be for one PC and the other one will be for the other one. So what we have here is two EK Coolstream XE 480 millimeter radiators and you can see these are nice and thick as well. So we will only be running one radiator per system but because of the amount of capacity that we have in these radiators themselves. There's quite a bit of water that will actually sit in these, much thicker than what you would find in your standard water-cooled PC. We should have more than enough cooling capacity here. And then we've got some nice EK fans sitting on the top here as well. And I will put a complete parts list down in the description as well as on our webpage for you so you can follow along the build. So there was quite a lot of planning that went into the layout here and I ran through a couple of different ideas. Originally, I wanted to kind of have it set like two rocker covers on an engine. So one sort of staggered that way and then one this way. But I realized that, you know, the fans were gonna look ugly if we mounted them pulling air through rather than pushing air in. And I didn't want to sort of have it sucking air from one hot radiator into the other one and having sort of, you know, a temperature share sort of scenario going on. So what we ended up doing is having the air coming through this way. So it's going in and then out the bottom and staggering it like this. So the idea is that the air 
coming through this radiator will pass through and then come out the back and then same kind of deal with this one as well. And they shouldn't interfere with each other too much. When both systems are running, then obviously it's kind of gonna push everything through, but it should be sucking mostly cool air in from the top here anyway. And look, honestly, with the amount of cooling capacity that we have here, I don't expect to see coolant temperatures over about 30 degrees in a uh, you know in an ambient room of maybe 21, 22 degrees, which is similar to what we saw in my old system. So as long as it can achieve that, I think we should be absolutely sweet. And you can see two power buttons here as well. So that is gonna be obviously switching on either of the systems. It was actually really cool. I went to JCar Electronics, which is another electronics store here in Australia. And the guy in the shop actually recognized me from the channel. He's a, uh, he's a sim racing fan and a boosted media fan. And he suggested these little uh, XLR boots to sit on the back of the power plugs. So that's the reason why we've used those. And just sort of trying to keep things as tidy as we possibly can, keeping the wiring as hidden as we possibly can too, to, so I guess, make it so that it's like a three-dimensional piece of artwork almost. So whichever way you look at it, it's nice and tidy and clean. So we still do have quite a bit of tidying up to go, obviously, but it's coming on quite nicely. And then if we move on back down to these panels for the PCs, these were just cut out of some wood. I did it all by hand with files and routers and things like that. Not skills that I'm particularly uh, well, well versed in. So I was kind of learning as I was going along. And that's been one of the really enjoyable things about this project is just taking my time with it, learning new skills as I go and uh, you know, learning ways that I can improve for next time I do something like this. So this is literally just a plank of wood that we stained and then varnish to give it a kind of bit of a semi-gloss kind of sheen to it. We cut a couple of pass-throughs which will sit behind the motherboard too. So the idea is that all the cables can run in from behind the motherboard and we're not actually gonna see any cables kind of floating around in front other than just the power cable which will be a white braided power cable which will run through the pass-through here and then plug into the ATX connection on the motherboard. Everything else will kind of run around underneath the motherboard and the motherboard's gonna sit up on top of these standoffs. And then behind, obviously, we've got some RGB lighting here too. So those strips will, again, be hidden behind the motherboard. So you should just sort of see this glow coming from behind the motherboard when everything's up and running. We've got RGB lighting inside the reservoir itself too, so that should glow too. And then, obviously, the fans are RGB too. So probably won't be running RGB lighting most of the time, but I wanted to have it in there just so that we could, uh, you know, get some PC porn happening and make it look really cool. So then the GPUs will be sitting on top of a couple of, uh, what are these guys, Cooler Master GPU brackets. And I actually have a PCI 4 uh, adapter to mount on this. This is only a PCI 3, so that will need to be changed over. But again, just basically vinyl wrapped with some Alcantara wrap, a couple of pieces of wood, bolted it to the assembly, and then that's gonna be screwed onto there as well in place. And uh, yeah, one of the trickiest things about this was actually replicating everything from one level to the other, so everything's perfectly symmetrical. You can imagine the pass-throughs that are sitting here have to line up with the ones that are here exactly, otherwise the pipes are gonna be at a bit of an angle as they run through. So a lot of meticulous uh, attention to detail, obviously getting these two lined up, getting the power buttons to line up perfectly, you know, lots of little things like that. So I mentioned before that it's a bit of a three-dimensional piece of artwork, and I wanted to sort of try to make things as tidy as I can on the back side as well. So whichever direction you look at it from, it still looks neat and tidy. So this is where I'm working on things at the moment. It's a bit of a mess at the moment, but you'll get the idea of what's going on. So up the top here, we've got a couple of EK Loop Connect modules, and those are gonna be responsible for running our fans and uh, our RGB lighting, our temperature probes, uh, flow control, pump control, everything's gonna happen through these boxes, and those then connect to the motherboard via USB. So I've still got to do a bunch of tidying up up the top here, but basically there's gonna be a trunk running down with the cables going to the bottom here. So we should have, you know, one nice clean sort of tube going down the middle here with all our wiring running from top to bottom. I might make some sort of a perspex shroud around this as well, seeing as it won't need any cooling, uh, just to sort of make this all tidy as well. But we'll see how we go with that later on. That's something that we can always add later on if we want to. Uh, I've also got to extend some of the wiring too to get from the bottom PC up to the top. So the next thing I've got to do is actually extend this USB header so that it's long enough to reach down the bottom. I've already created our power connections for our power buttons. So that is the 12 volt power, which runs to the LED in the power button. And actually did a video guide about a year and a half ago now. I'll link it down in the description for you guys if you want to know how to make a remote power button for your PC. This is basically exactly the same as what we did there. So that connects to 12 volt for the LED on the power supply. So when the PC turns on, the light turns on 
and then we've got our header which will connect to the motherboard to actually turn things on. And then obviously that's replicated down the bottom for the second PC as well. So let's spin back around to the front quickly and I'll talk you through what we're planning in terms of PC hardware. So down the bottom, I'm still trying to decide whether to use my old 8086K uh, with 32 gig of RAM and the 2080 Ti graphics card. That's the system that I'm actually currently running for all my recording and streaming duties, although we haven't done a stream for a very long time. That was my original desktop PC, which you guys that have been following the channel for a long time would know that was the original machine that I built here on the channel. Uh, but yeah, we'll basically be pulling the motherboard out of that and putting that in here as well as a graphics card RAM and all those bits and pieces. May do that or it may put in, we do have a spare 9900K system as well, which is definitely overkill for the duties that it's gonna need for what we need for um, recording cameras and streaming, but it is a spare system, so we may end up using that hardware, just haven't decided yet. But in terms of the main brains of the operation, what's gonna be running the triple 4K screens and all the SIM and everything, that is gonna be a 12900K system. Intel very kindly sent us across the CPU. Asus also sent us a Z690 Maximus uh, Hero motherboard, so that's what we're gonna be running there. And then that will start off with a the 3090 graphics card, which I'm currently running in the sim rig. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna pull the standard heatsink off that and run water cooling on it immediately, simply because I know the, uh, the 4000 series graphics cards are gonna be coming out pretty soon from NVIDIA, and that should be a pretty massive leap up in performance, which should allow us to run our graphics settings even higher on the triple 4K system. So I may hold off and then get a water block for that, but we'll just see. Obviously, it will, it'll look a little bit unfinished with a air-cooled graphics card on one part and everything else being water-cooled, but I also don't want to risk damage to a 3090 only to then put the air cooler back on when we don't need that card anymore and we go to sell it or put it in a different machine. So not 100% decided yet, yet, but it will start off with a 3090 and the 12900K system, then we'll upgrade it to the 4000 series graphics cards when they drop. And I think that is pretty much everything for today, guys. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is from here on in, I wanted to, I guess, get it up to this point where it was something that I could present to you guys and show you kind of, and you could visualize what we're doing here rather than sort of document drilling holes and you know woodworking and things that aren't necessarily very exciting. But from here on out, we've got all the really cool fun stuff to do. So we're gonna be doing all the plumbing, hard lines, tube bending, all that cool stuff. And I'm gonna take you along for the ride with that. So make sure you're subbed so you don't miss out on that stuff. Leave a thumbs up as well if you have enjoyed this video and leave a comment down below as well with any suggestions that you might have. Obviously, I've uh, I've tried to think of as many scenarios as I can here, but for you guys who might be experienced with this kind of work, uh, let me know if you have any suggestions or any ideas that you think might help us or improve things. So this is the project that we're gonna be working on for the next little while, obviously in conjunction with the normal content that you guys see on the channel. So I really hope you enjoy it guys. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you again in the next one. Bye.